You are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simpler language. Today's topic is compare TCP to UDP. This is a topic in the CCNA exam, exam code 200-301. Let's take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we are headed. Hashtag lab every day. All right, this is the exam blueprint, CCNA exam version 1.0, exam code 200-301. We just wrapped up the section, identify interface and cable issues. I think I'm going to skip most of the hands-on for now, unless it say configure and verify just like that. That's what we gonna do the hands-on because I realized I didn't, you know, drag this series on and on last year. So we gonna try to, you know, race through these topics here. Anytime it says compare, that means we just gonna talk about the theory. We're not gonna really get our hands dirty. If I got time, maybe I'll make it do a video, but we still in section one. And I think I realized we've been stuck in this last year in 2020. So. Let's go ahead and get through this, right? So again, today we're going to compare TCP and UDP. So guess what? That means PowerPoints for y'all, right? Just theory. It is what it is. But once we get to the configure and verify part, we'll get our hands dirty. And there's going to be a couple of labs for that. So what is TCP and UDP, right? Before we can get into that, like, let me give y'all a quick high level overview with this meme right here. I know y'all probably thinking, man, I'm sitting here trying to learn about, you know, computing and see a route switch and stuff like that. And this dude is showing me memes. I can't take this guy seriously, man. Unsubscribe. <laughs> well, hear me out now. Hear me out before before you unsubscribe and, you know, go to another video. It's one computer and another computer is trying to send traffic to somebody else and back and forth, right? Well, if we take this person and treat them like they are a receiver and we're going to take this person and tell them that they are a sender and that the baby is the data, right? We're going to hand this baby off very carefully, right? That's how TCP works, right? And the reason why it does that and why they say that the sender is sending the receiver in a very careful manner is because it has all of these mechanisms like windowing and sequencing, flow control and stuff like that. Stuff that makes sure that the traffic is reliable and gets there when it needs to get there. That's what they are trying to say with this picture here. As you can see right here, UDP, the sender, you don't, you, don't, you don't even see the receiver over here, right? The lady is shooting her shot with the baby right here. UDP traffic don't have those mechanisms like TCP does. It doesn't have windowing and flow control and stuff like that. It just sends the data and just hopes that it get there, right? What we are worried about with T UDP traffic is speed. That's the difference here, right? TCP has a lot of header, right? And a lot of, a lot of overhead that attaches to the packet and then make sure that the traffic gets there. UDP traffic don't do that. It just sends the traffic and just, it just, if it gets there, oh well. If it don't, oh well. It just sends the traffic. That's what they're trying to say with this, with this meme right here. But before we even get into the official definition and things like that, let's talk about the OSI model and the TCP IP model. Now y'all remember, I think in the layer two, layer three, which is video I had introduced to y'all, the, the OSI model and the TCP IP model, right? There are two like reference models that we use to, you know, talk about IT and, and the TCP IP and networking and things like that, right? Remember we said that the OSI model had one, two, three, I'm not gonna draw all this for y'all, but it had seven layers, right? Whereas TCP IP model has only, as you can see, four layers, right? Well, we're not worried about the OSI model for now, obviously, because we worried about the TCP IP model, right? Specifically, this layer right here, the transport layer. Why are we talking about the transport layer? Because we're talking about a sender and a receiver, right? When they are transporting the data, right? They have two type of protocols that they can use to transfer the data, right? What are those protocols? You guessed it, <laughs> TCP and UDP. As you can see right here, it's the transport layer and it's responsible for end-to-end -end connections and reliability. Only one of, one of those protocols are reliable and we'll go further into that with these next slides right here, right? So today we are talking about the transport layer, right? Not necessarily in the OSI model, but just the transport layer in general. So in the OSI model, it's layer four and the TCP IP model is layer three, but we don't really call it layer three. We don't refer to it as that. When we talk about the layers one through seven, we talk about the OSI model. But for now, we are concerned with the transport layer protocols that are within the transport layer are udp and tcp now let's go further into that so tcp stands for transmission control protocol it is a connection oriented notice i did this in bold right here connection oriented and a connection between client and the server is established before data can be sent right so before we send data we need to make sure we establish a connection 
and I'm going to break down those steps for you on how TCP does that. The server must be listening or passive open. That is the state that it's in. See if there's a, um, you know, traffic coming in on the other side for connection requests from clients before a connection is established. So before we establish a connection between the sender and the receiver, they need to do what's called a three-way handshake. And I'll talk further into that in the next slide or in the next couple slides, rather. The three-way handshake, active open, retransmission and error detection adds to reliability. Remember, we said reliability. TCP is a reliable transport protocol. Why do we say that? Because it requires the other end to let me know that they've got it. Remember, UDP don't do that. We don't care if the other person got it. It's so that's why we say it's not reliable. You might be wondering, well, why do we need UDP traffic? It's not reliable, right? Well, we'll go further into that when we talk about UDP. So as I mentioned, it adds to reliability, but it lengthens latency. Why do we say that? Well, it lengthens latency because it adds what's called overhead. So this right here, this header is about 20 bytes. This is the header that you'll see when you're doing like a wire shark, like a, like a packet capture or something like that. That's what's attached to the packet. We've got what's here, source port, right? So where it came from, we got a destination port, where it's going to. So you're gonna see this when you're doing like a packet capture. We have a sequence number, what's the sequence number? When it sends traffic, it's gonna say, okay, this is packet number one. When it receives it, he's gonna send it back. He's gonna get it, that's packet number two and so on and so forth. That's the sequence number. We also have acknowledgement numbers, right? And I'll talk more further into that, but we're not gonna break down. We're not gonna get too deep into this. That's what the sequence and acknowledgement numbers are. We've got the window size. I've got a video on window size. You don't go deep into my playlist. I believe it's in the, when I was studying for the, C the CCMP exam, I talk about what windowing is and stuff like that. Again, this is supposed to be a high level overview because this is for the CCNA exam. Let me stop talking your ear off about the header. But anyways, the header, this, all this information gets tacked onto your packet before it sends it off. That's why it's a little bit slower than UDP traffic. TCP is used extensively by internet applications, including the World Wide Web, which what you're very familiar with, you watching this using actually more, more so UDP traffic because we're streaming, but we're gonna go further into that. But World Wide Web, so when you're like using email, FTP or sending, you know, sending pictures and stuff like that, SSH, secure shell, or to peer file sharing. We're using those applications, we're using TCP traffic. Remember what I said about the three-way handshake, right? We'll go further into that in the, in the next slide, but this is just more of a, a real world example of what the high TCP traffic is, right? The sender, host A, this guy right here, he says, hey, I'm sending the data, right? He sends the data, and then if he doesn't, if the receiver, the receiver does not get it, he's, he, and an error occurred, he's gonna say, hey, can you please send me that data? I didn't get it, right? And he's gonna call, what's the case? He's gonna do what's called a retransmission. Send it again, right? And that's where these sequence numbers and the acknowledgement numbers come into play. It'll say, okay, this is packet number 39, 40, 41, 42, so on and so forth. And then if one gets dropped or it didn't get it, it's gonna send a retransmission request and so on and so forth. And he's gonna do right here, like I said, okay, I'm retransmitting the data. And then the data received. Received Again, these each one of these has sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers. This will be packet number one. This will be packet number two, so on and so forth. And that is why it's considered a reliable transfer protocol, transport protocol, because we know, okay, if we're missing a packet, if we're pack, missing packet number 49 or whatever, it's going to ask for the other one back. You Again, UDP is shooting her shot right here, right? The sender don't care about all that. It just sends the traffic. It just sends the traffic. It don't care whether the receiver gets it or not. Okay, so here's the breakdown of the three-way handshake. Think of the three-way handshake as people that's introducing each other to themselves before they establish a connection. TCP three-way handshake is a process which is used in a TCP IP network to make a connection between the server and the client. It is a three-step process that requires both the client and the server to exchange synchronization and acknowledgement packets before the real data communication process starts. Again, we got the sender and the receiver. It don't matter, I know I got two computers right here, but it could be a laptop and a laptop. It could be a switch and a switch, a router and a router. But we, when we're going to establish TCP transport or uh, TCP traffic, we gotta go through this three-way handshake first before we establish communication. You might be wondering like, does that really happen when I'm sending an email? Yes, it does, believe it or not. It's just that it happens so fast that you don't even, you don't even recognize it. You have to do, like again, you would have to do a packet capture to even see all of this stuff going on. It just happens so fast. So the main three things that you wanna know is SYN, SYNAC, and ACK. I'm gonna say it for you again. SYN, SYNAC, and ACK. Those are the three packets that we know that are part of the three-way handshake. First one, SYN. 
What does that mean? It means synchronization. We are synchronized. I'm starting to synchronize the traffic over to you so that way we can start communicating. Synac, what does Synac mean? It's synchronization, but also acknowledgement. So this is our first acknowledgement packet. Synac, that's the second one that comes in. So that means he letting them know, okay, the first client, number one, he send it to him. He's like, hey, how you doing? And then the Synac comes in, that's the second packet, right? I'm doing fine. You, what's up, you wanna communicate? And then the packet is, I mean, the, the client is gonna receive that and then he's gonna send an acknowledgement. That's what that third one is, it's an acknowledgement. Yeah, I wanna go ahead and communicate. You wanna do that? The server is gonna be like, okay, that's cool. He don't even say it. Right after that act, the connection is established. That's why it's green right here. And then they start communicating. The email gets sent, the porn gets sent. Whatever the case may be, we start communicating. That is what happens before we start communicating, the three-way handshake. Very, 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 very fundamental networking concept. Memorize those three, sin, sin, act, and act. Here's another image that kind of explains the three-way handshake. Notice right here, same thing, sin, sin, act. I know it says act, sin right there. That first client sends it in, sends in, he's ready to send information. It says it's an active open state. You might not need to memorize this for the uh, CCNA exam, but just know that before they communicate, using TCP traffic, he is going to send a SYN packet. So the SYN is sent. That's the first sequence number, right? He receives it, he is in passive open, but notice it's in, closed in, a, it's in a closed state. He was listening. The SYN is received, and then the SYNAC is sent. Now you do a packet capture, you see this breakdown right here. So I know I said it's only three, SYN, SYNAC, and ACK, but when you do a breakdown, it's gonna be like SYN sent, SYN, SYNAC received, and so on and so forth. You'll see packet, um, you'll see acknowledgement numbers, you'll see sequence numbers, so on and so forth, before the connection is established. Finally, UDP traffic, what is UDP? You figure, okay, y'all probably wondering, why am I gonna use UDP traffic if it's not reliable and it's, 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 got, it's throwing babies around, right? Why, why, why would I need UDP traffic? Well, let's talk about what UDP is and how it's used, what it's used with. UDP stands for User Data Grand Protocol. It's a connectionless transport layer protocol. Again, transport layer. What's layer four of the OSI model and the TCP IP protocol stack. UDP is simple protocol that exchanges datagrams without acknowledgements. Notice, without acknowledgements. We don't care if the, per if the receiver is getting that baby. We are not acknowledging it. We are just sending the traffic, right? We don't care or guaranteed delivery. So we don't care if the other person gets it or not. If you ever notice when you're watching like Netflix and stuff like that, and you see a little bit of jitter or like you you're on the phone and stuff like that, and you, it sounds like somebody's underwater or something like that, that is when packets are being dropped or the delivery is not being sent to you. We don't really care about the send of delivery being sent. We just try to send it. We are concerned with speed when it comes to UDP traffic. Here's the header of what UDP looks like. And notice it's a bit smaller. It's not as much information, right? We just care about the source, destination, port, right? The length, the header, head and data checksum. That's basically check for errors and stuff like that, right? But the size of this header is about eight bytes, I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it's eight bytes. And it's not, so there's not as much overhead on the packet that's being sent. So that's why it's, we're able to send UDP traffic a little bit faster. So that's why we use UDP traffic for streaming applications such as voice over IP or like video and stuff like that. that we talk about UDP traffic. Host A is the sender, right? Notice he is talking to Ebonics right here. He says, is you getting data correctly? And then the host B is just like, I don't care, but send it faster. We just worried about the speed when it comes to UDP traffic. That's why we use it for like video streaming and stuff like that. We are just worried about the speed. We don't care about acknowledgements or sequence numbers and stuff like that. We just send the traffic. TP traffic is secure. What do we mean by that? It uses, uh, I believe, a secure socket layer. So the traffic is more secure. That's why we use it with like FTP and stuff like that. It's, a, it's considered a more secure protocol, whereas UDP traffic is not as secure that you yeah you can put it with vpn and stuff like that but that again that is overhead traffic that we're adding to our packets it's connection oriented meaning we have to establish a connection first before we send tcp traffic whereas udp doesn't it's tcp is slow udp is fast tcp is guaranteed transmission udp does not guarantee transmission <laughs> tcp traffic is used for critical applications UDP traffic is used by real-time applications. So when we need to see stuff like currently happening to us, like streaming, 
we use UDP traffic. There's packet reorder mechanisms for TCP. UDP don't have those reordering mechanisms. So if we're missing a packet, like when we're watching a video, we're not gonna say, hey, we missed that one skit that was dropped in 43 seconds of that video. We don't care about that. Just send the rest of the video. Control. TCP has that. I have a video on flow control if you want to know more about that in, in my uh, CCMP playlist. There is no flow control with UDP traffic. There, there is er error checking with TCP traffic. UDP don't do error checking. There is a bigger header or more, and that's what I mean by overhead. There's, there's more overhead with TCP traffic, whereas UDP traffic was, as you can see right here, right? When you compare the two headers, UDP traffic is a bit smaller than TCP traffic because there's a bigger header. TCP has an acknowledgement mechanism, whereas UDP does not acknowledge, again, we don't care about the other the sender whether we throw it when we throw in that baby we don't care whether they catch it or not we just send in that traffic tcp has that three-way handshake that i mentioned right sin synac and act udp don't have no handshake it just sends that traffic no these are the these are the type of applications that uses tcp dns http https ftp smtp telnet and snmp you want to know further more about those protocols i did a video on all of this stuff I believe in the section 1.1 g servers i believe we talked about all of those protocols in that video so if you want to know more about more about that check out the servers theory video and lastly udp traffic is used by dns also also used by dhcp tcp as tftp as well snmp rip which is a routing protocol and voice over ip like i mentioned before here's another meme for y'all that describes the difference between tcp and udp traffic tcp traffic as you can see we are very careful when we are drinking that water we want to make sure we get every last bit every last drop out of that bottle whereas udp traffic we don't care we just send that data just give me that water baby that is all i got for y'all today that is my youtube page that is my Twitter handle. That is my IG. Follow me on either of those social media platforms if you want to connect with me on a more personal level. If you like this video, go ahead and hit me with that uh, like button. Leave a comment below if you want to see some more of this stuff. Share this video on your social media platforms. Share it on your Twitter platform. Share it on IG. Share it on TikTok. I don't care. Just spread the word. For now, anyways, comment, like, subscribe to the network.